Hooty who all my stock market gamblers. Welcome today. I'm Tall Mike. It's Monday. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Today the markets are continuing to drop. The Dow Jones, it was down about 900. The Nasdaq was down about 500 at the time I'm recording this. Markets are starting to come back a little. Dow's down about 700. Nasdaq's only down about 400. But the slide is continuing. We are retesting those recent lows. Actually, we've dropped below the recent lows. Now we pulled back up and we're sitting right at the lows. Now, a lot of people think this market's going to crash from here. 30, 40% more downside. I'm not so sure. That's not my call. I actually think we're going to bounce from here. Now, could we have a crash? Absolutely, we could have a crash. I just don't believe it's time yet. I don't believe this is the crash. Look at we've been, this has taken six months to play out. We're down about 20% on the S&P 500. That to me is not a crash. That's an orderly decline. What that means to me is the Fed is still pumping up the markets. The Fed will not let this fall. The plunge protection team goes in and buys it. The drop in shirts, drop in over six months, we drop 20%. But it's too orderly. This isn't the crash. We're going to get a short covering rally from this. I still believe that. Now, we, I did think the recent lows would hold. Now, I was wrong on that. We've overtaken the recent lows, and I am a buyer here. I'm putting some money to work. I have put some positions on the QQQs today. We'll see how that plays out over time. We got the Fed meeting on Wednesday. We got options expiring on Friday. Friday, I'm expecting a lot of volatility. Look at the VIX, the VIX. The VIX is the volatility index. That's up over 20% today. It's exploding higher. The means that market's going to be moving all over the place, up and down. Now, I'll probably take some of my positions off if we get a nice bounce in the next day or two. That's just the way I play it. I'm a trader. I jump in the markets. I jump out of the markets. The fear is running at an all-time high. Well, not all-time high, but the fear index is just off the charts. I mean, well, there's extreme fear in this market right now. I mean, today, everything was dropping. We got Bitcoin down about 6000 We got the gold market down about $40. The sell-off is in everything today. There's nothing safe today. It's all coming down, right? And that's where everybody's afraid and it's hard to buy when everybody's afraid. But that, in my opinion, is the time you want to start nibbling, start putting some money to work. Now, I'm not saying to go all in by any means. You want to have some powder dry just in case this is the crash. Now, I don't believe it is. I do believe we're going to get that short covering rally and I do believe we're going to be much higher than we are right now at the end of the month. This is the end of the quarter. They want to pump this market up. Now the Fed meeting is Wednesday. They're going to raise 50 basis points. We all know that and I'm sure they would love to reverse course with the market collapsing. But if they reverse course it's going to be game over. I mean the market will tank. They're going to raise 50 basis points on Wednesday. Now let's move over to the real estate market, right? Alright, so anyways, this is interesting. This is interesting. Zillow comes out with an article over the weekend. Hey, the housing market is not in a bubble. It's not. Oh, well, that's good to know, Zillow. Zillow, now Zillow's that company. They went into the house flipping business. They lost billions of dollars. Now, their stock was at $200. Today, it trades about $33. Now, was their stock at a in a bubble? <laughs> they would tell you it was never in a bubble. <laughs> but anyways, I understand their perspective because, well, th they're based on the real estate market continuing to move higher. Look, at this has been the best real estate market over the past two or three years during the pandemic that we've ever had in Zillow. They haven't figured out how to make money, even in the best of times. So now we're coming into what might be the worst of times. And maybe Zillow just goes away completely. We don't know. Maybe they go back. Bankrupt. We'll see what happens there. But what's interesting is uh, a lot of people say that the market 
Well, the, the market can't crash. It can't crash because there's no inventory. Well, actually, inventory, that's a very interesting point. Inventory went up 26% month over month. Between April and May, inventory rose 26%. That's like one of the fastest. That probably is the record that inventories ever rose in one month. 26% is a lot. But the fact that they say that the market can't crash because we have no inventory, well, that's that's just that, that's just a bunch of BS in my opinion. Now what they're calling this, they're calling this the great deceleration. You see, real estate was accelerating at a rate of 20% a year. And they say that, well, we're kind of going to decelerate, maybe only go up 10% a year. They're crazy. That's BS. We're going to get the market coming down. Now, real estate agents, they refuse to admit that the prices are actually falling. They refuse to admit that. They go, they're not falling. They're not falling. They're just taking a pause. Now, is your area taking a pause. I know your area can't fall, but a lot of areas are already falling. Look it, we're coming into what's known as a recession. Now, a lot of people think we're not going to be in a recession. You see, we used to be a consumer-driven economy. Uh, uh, the GDP was 70% driven by the consumer. Well, now we're a debt-driven economy. The more debt that's out there, the better the economy does. We need more debt because the consumer, the consumer's broke, but we're going into a recession. What happens in a recession? People lose their jobs. Now, are they buying more homes when they lose their jobs? No, they're buying fewer homes. Now, here's the problem with real estate in a nutshell. In a nutshell, it's just unaffordable. It really is unaffordable. The affordability factor is, you know, it's no one can afford to buy a house. It They really can't. Now, when interest rates were 3%, maybe, maybe some of those new homes, 1.6 million new homes coming onto the marketplace, maybe some of those would sell at 3%, but at 6%, I don't think they're going to get a lot of those sold, so the prices are going to drop to drop. But yes, now, affordability factor, homes have gone up 20% a year, so that makes them less and less affordable. But the mortgage rates, now they're up 42 percent it's 42 more expensive to borrow money than it was just six months ago now new home sales have already dropped 30 percent existing home sales have already dropped 16 percent based on volume now the a lot of people are going yeah mike but the prices the prices are still high look at you can see the stock market tanking it's tanking today down of 800 points you can see that and everybody goes oh man that's that's just terrible they, there's a pain panic there, right? There's a panic there. Well, believe me, if you knew what was going on behind the scenes in the real estate market, a lot of people would be panicked. This is not good what's going on. It is not. Look, at the, the, the Federal Reserve killed the housing market. They just killed it. The housing market, they destroyed it. They destroyed how they do that. Well, they stopped buying mortgage-backed securities. As a matter of fact, they're selling mortgage-backed securities, and then they took interest rates and they starting to say they're going to raise them. They're going to raise them. They're going to raise them. Now, what this has done to the cost of the mortgage just exploding higher. But the Federal Reserve has already destroyed the housing market. Believe me, it's coming down. Look it. The stock market has lost six trillion dollars. Six trillion. That's just the U.S. stock market. Now, what about the crypto market? Well, the crypto market. I'm not even counting the big sell-off today. The crypto market was at three trillion. Now it's one trillion, and that's all the cryptos combined. It's lost two trillion. Two trillion dollars wiped out off the face of the planet. Right? Okay. So all of this money has disappeared. Now, what's that make people do? Does it make them want to run out? and buy a house? No, but if they have a couple of houses, I guarantee you they're going to be putting one of those houses on the market. They're going to be wanting to get out. There's going to be a little bit of panic in the market. There's going to be that fear of, uh, you know, fear that they can't get out. They can't get out quick enough. Look at Billy Bob. He got out, but they're still in it and they want to get the price Billy Bob got, but it ain't going to happen for them. It's too late. The Federal Reserve has already crashed the market. The market's fake. It's been fake. It's been pumped up by the Federal Reserve printing the money. It's been pumped up by the Federal Reserve holding interest rates at 0%. It's been pumped up by the Federal Reserve buying mortgages at 
tune of forty billion dollars a month. That all pumped the market up, and that you know, and they also no, let's not forget, let's not forget, they also give Blackstone and BlackRock, they give them free money to go out and buy houses. Well, now they're they're pulling back. They're pulling back. They're saying, no, we can't get you that free money anymore. We got to charge you for the money, and maybe BlackRock, maybe Blackstone back off a little bit, and they don't buy as many houses. Maybe they start to sell some of the houses they already got. Do you see how it's changing? The, everything's changing right now. And today is a big change. Oh, we're just changing. I mean, the markets, the markets. Oh, it's just, it, oh, it's exciting to watch the yeah, stock market fall and the Bitcoin's crashing, the gold market's down. And believe me, the housing market's down too. The housing market is in pain. Real estate's in a house of pain. The commercial real estate is just utterly destroyed. You got office buildings half full. They can't refinance. They can't find loans on this stuff. This stuff's going to be dumped on the market. Believe me, the third and fourth quarter of this year, you're going to start to hear about this and it's not going to be good. It is bad. It is a house of pain. We'll just see. That's just my rant for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit me with that thumbs up. It's Monday, everybody. Get out there. Have a great Monday, and we'll talk again real soon. Bye-bye now.